Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 4 in a short series of videos covering upgrades to the Simpit. In this video I'll be looking to revisit the circuit breaker panel. Let's buckle up. The inclusion of the circuit breaker panel within the sim pit is a journey that started a couple of years ago. After making the frame for the front dash, it was one of the first panels I put in, but as a placeholder. It was always my intention to interface it into the sim, so I designed and put in place all of the circuitry, so at some point in the future, at this point now with upgrades, I can look to wire it up and bring it online. As a brief summary to the design of this panel, it's comprised of three main parts. You've got the PCBs, which we can see in the top right here, which I've soldered tactile push buttons to, which have a LED within them. We then have 3D printed caps, which we can see in the top left there, and they click onto the tactile switches themselves, and they represent the breakers. There's also then the value of those breakers, which I've machined in acrylic and pushed into the top of the 3D print. And the final part, which we can see at the bottom half of the screen, is the CNC machined fascia, again, made out of painted acrylic. So these three are combined together to what we see now. The key point to mention here is in replicating the functionality of this panel, the circuit breakers aren't poppable in the true sense. The LED in the head of the circuit breaker will illuminate to indicate it's been tripped. And then by pushing the head of that circuit breaker back in, you can reset it. It's possible in the future that I might revisit this panel again and actually look at making them poppable. I did run some tests with solenoids originally although they ran very hot so this will be the solution i use for this version of the design so let's revisit this now and take a look at it as it is currently within the sim pit and whilst looking at that it might be that the tissel panel which i'd put in also as a placeholder i might just replace that with a blanking plate just as I start at some point moving towards the A10C2. We'll just come in for a closer look. And whilst I'm reworking this panel, it looks like it needs a bit of a clean up, a bit of a dust magnet. So I'll go ahead and remove the Tissel panel now, just so we can have a look at the rear of this. So we can see the rudder pedals here, and there's a good amount of space in the cavity. That said, I will need to be certain that the new wiring which is introduced at the rear of the circuit breaker panel doesn't interfere with the centre of the rudder pedals, the part that rotates. So let's go ahead and take this out. And this is where those brass inserts, which took a little bit of extra time to introduce into the design of the front dash, come in really handy. And there she is, all ready for the upgrade. It's worth noting that at the time I designed the circuit board, I didn't know the method of interface I'd use. So to keep all options open, each switch was designed as individually addressable, completely isolated from any of the others. And this gives good flexibility for almost allowing any type of interface in the future but the downside is there's no common ground pin, so there will be a much greater amount of wiring to do now. So the next step is I revisit the original panel and its circuitry and just run some tests and just firm up in my mind the wiring that I'll put in place and the method of interface that will, will be DCS BIOS. Probably a mix of IRQ serial and RS485. Ideally, it would all go on the network, but I'm thinking that the LEDs will play nicer over IRQ serial. So from my tests, I can see all of the breakers are working properly. So 
So I'll take some time now to start all of the wiring and as I quite often do there's different colour coding of wires so I can look back and instantly identify where each particular wire goes. And a number of times through this build up of the rear I just check that it definitely fits into this cavity and it is a really tight fit not so much in depth although that is a consideration but particularly the width and let's just shine a light on this and have a clearer look so after a brief period of putting in place all the needed wiring i can start to run some some integration tests get it talking to the the simulator I'll just work my way around some of the breakers now and trip them. And what's really cool is a number of these, when they are tripped, it does impact some of the actual systems in the simulation of the ATAN. And we'll be able to better see that when this is installed into the sim pit so that looks good let's subdue the light in yeah i can't wait to get this into the sim pit so i'll just run some further tests as i push each of these breakers back in place Each one of those being reset. And at this point I've been looking at this from the simulation outputting the status of them. So let's test the inputs now. We'll go ahead and briefly test and illuminate all of them now. I'm definitely pleased with the effect to them when they're lit. Definitely clear and legible. And they've got a good feel to them, these tactile switches as well. So the way this would work in the sim pit is that something occurs within the aircraft to pop one of the breakers. I may then see various systems being affected by that according on the particular breaker and the breaker being illuminated itself and I can physically press it back in place which will reset it. So I've got a number of other tests to run here. Everything at this stage is over IRQ serial um, and I do want to see how it plays on a RS-485 network and what I found with the caution light panel was when you're driving such a big volume of LEDs that's where IRQ serial tends to perform that bit better one thing that I did do was for the values of the breakers I sprayed them with a sealant a type of lacquer so that hopefully will ward off any any risk of any oils from the fingertip marking it And the interface test for DCS BIOS confirm my original thoughts. I will use RS-485 for the inputs and an Arduino Mega as a slave. So in this case the slave PCB acts as a pass-through from the point of view of wiring. At this point I can reinstall it into the SIM pit. So let's come round and I'll just get a close up view of this. So like before, just go ahead and shine a light on this. So all is in place and ready to bring online. It did end up being quite a squeeze to fit it into that space. And I'll just move the rudder pedals here so you can see that that centre point had to have free movement and it did take just a 
few small adjustments at the rear of the circuit breaker panel so I could be sure that was the case. And in terms of the final connections for the inputs, I tapped into the RS485 network I'd use for the HSI. So it just involved this, this cable here, just coming up and feeding through. And then that became one of the slaves on this other network. For the LED outputs, I connect those to a USB hub. So let's fire up the SIM and bring it online. So I'll just zoom in and get a good clear view of the breakers. So a number of these breakers when tripped do have a direct impact on some of the aircraft systems. The breaker for the standby attitude indicator, see the status of here, we can also see the impact that's had on that system there. And then we can see it reset. And let's take a look at that one again. We have a condition within the aircraft that pops a breaker. We can see a system has been impacted and which particular breaker it is. Push it back in place and it's reset. The three breakers across the auxiliary ESS bus, if we trip one of those now or any of them, we can see an impact that that has. An impact reflected in the hydraulic gauges, the EMI, and we've got some warnings on the caution light panel. Push that back in, and again, breaker reset, system restored. So, on reflection, really pleased with this. Uh, good addition. It definitely was something that at the time I began the work on the front dash, there was such a piece of work to do there. I wanted to prioritise that first. But in terms of the upgrade phase, this is good to revisit and bring it online. So I'll run a whole heap of other tests now across the other breakers. And another system that's impacted is the anti-skid function, which is kind of cool because when that breaker pops, the magnetically held switch disengages, so you hear that flip position as well. So that's another upgrade completed. So in the coming weeks, I'll plan the next series of upgrades, and I look forward to sharing those in the future. Thanks for watching.